but when it doesn't want to work, it's, it's hard to deal with. scriptures and stuff in the Bible. Next thing you know, we had both we had both gotten into the Bible and done so much study and it three hours had passed and it was eleven thirty. And I told her, I said, Brittany, I said, I don't have anything for Sunday morning. I said, we were sitting here studying. <laughs> you know, just just going over different things in the Bible. I said, I said, I was supposed to be studying for church on Sunday morning. And uh she told me, she said, well, she said why don't you just write down all the stuff that we studied that night? I said, I think I'll do that. Um, it's not going to be a very long thing. I want to get as much time to the minister as what we can. Yes. Um, but we was talking about how sometimes when people begin to study the Bible and they read certain scriptures, it kind of leaves them confused. You know, they read certain scriptures in the Bible and it just kind of, it's almost like they think, you know, well, uh, well, how could God be this way? And this is where Bible study comes in. Yes. You know, we've been doing that Bible study on Tuesday nights, and we've had people ask, you know, how do you actually study the Bible? You know, how do you get into it? Where do you start? Where do you begin? And I've got to where I tell them, you know, just start in the first part of the New Testament. And a lot of Bible studies that you go through, they, they do the Old Testament and the New Testament at the same time. But I, I found that it's far more helpful if you study in the New Testament. And then when you come in the New Testament to where it refers to something in the Old Testament, you go back to the Old Testament and then you study that. It, it prevents... A lot of confusion and trying to figure out where you're at and what's going on you know it just it's a really really good place to start I'm gonna start in Romans chapter 9 and I'm gonna start with verse 14 it says what shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God God forbid God is righteous. for he said to Moses I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose I have raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he pardon it. He's righteous. Yeah. He got everything right. And me and Brittany was talking about these scriptures. And it and, and when you begin to study, you have to realize what context he's talking to. You have to realize who he is talking to. It's very, very important when you're studying to know who they are talking to. In the book of Romans. Paul was writing to uh, the Jewish people, and he was also writing to the Christian Gentiles. Now, you have to know, in, in order to understand the context he's talking to, you have to know who he is talking to. In this context, he's talking to the Jews. Let's go back in time. You know, he's telling the Jews that, you know, God can choose to use whoever he wants to use. You know, who are we to question God about he who he God. decides to use and how he decides to use he them? Created all things. You know, he, these Jews, they thought they were, you know, they were the chosen people. Oh, yeah. They were the chosen people. And they were. And he's telling them, you know, who do you think you are to try to put God on a leash? Who do you think you are to put him on a leash? Yeah. 
And another thing that we began to talk about was the, the last verse. It says, therefore he had mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden it. And she said, doesn't that sound kind of harsh? And it does sound kind of harsh to think that God would just harden somebody's heart. But when we was listening to Brother Devin last night, God has a purpose in everything that he does. In everything that he does. If he hardens somebody's heart, it's for a purpose. In Exodus 4 and 21, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. He didn't keep no secrets So we're going to the story that Paul's referring to. We're going back to it in Exodus. This is the same story that was referred to. And this is where in your Bible study, how it comes in handy to study in the New Testament and then refer back to the Old Testament so that you know what's going on. Because if you just read that in the New Testament, you really have no idea what happened. You had no idea why he hardened Pharaoh's heart. You're thinking, you know, how could God be this way that he would just harden somebody's heart? Well, let's just prove God. You know, here he tells us that Moses, when he goes to Egypt, he asks Pharaoh to let the people go. And God would harden Pharaoh's heart. And here's the question that people ask. How could we serve a God that would harden a person's heart to what God wanted them to do? How could we serve a God that would harden someone's heart? In Exodus 5 and verse 1, it says, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, go, God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. He the Lord. Now this doesn't specifically say his heart was hardened. No. But we know from his words that he is hardened to God. Yeah. He has been hardened yeah. to God at this point. He this you know, he said, he says, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? But he's gonna know pretty soon. He doesn't even acknowledge that he knows who he is. No. Continuing on in Exodus, I'm kind of skipping around just to, just to get to these points. Uh, chapter 10 and verse 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's son, what things I have wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. So, we know from this verse that he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He said he was going to, and he did. Yeah. For a purpose. Yes. There was a purpose. Just like Brother Devin was talking about last night. All the things that we go through are for a purpose. We may not know what the purpose is. We may not understand what the purpose is. But it is for a purpose. And the purpose was so that he could show the signs that can be told and passed through generations. So that the people would know that he is the Lord. You know, this was the purpose. He wanted to show these signs to all these people. He hardened Pharaoh's heart just so he could show the signs. He could show Pharaoh, Pharaoh's servants, all the people of Egypt, and also the Israelites that were captive in Egypt at the time, that he was the Lord. 
in Exodus 9 and 27. It says, And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings in hell. And I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord. And the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hell, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunders and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, oh, yeah. and hardened his heart. You ever seen that before? He and his servants, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. This is not the first time this has happened. So the thing is, is this is interesting. God had hardened Pharaoh's heart for a purpose to show forth these signs. And all the times before, he had never acknowledged that he had done anything wrong. He had never acknowledged that God himself, he had never acknowledged that anything was his fault. And at this point, he says, I and my people have sinned. I have sinned. And my, me and my people are, are wicked. So, Seeing the light. in my mind, I'm thinking, he now knows that he's wrong. First hand. So this means that at this point, his heart is not hard. At this point, he has the ability to understand what is going on and understand that that he has done wrong. Yeah. And I'm thinking in today's times, when we go through things and 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 God puts things on us, we're going to go through. Them. A lot of times we think, you know, God, why have you done this? God, why have you done this? We hear it lots of times, and. Be careful. Don't say but he always gives us a way out. Yes. Even in the Old Testament times, this was Pharaoh's way out. He made a way. God gave Pharaoh a way out. Yes, sir. He gave him the ability to understand that he was wrong. Look what he could have done. So, how could we serve a God that hardens somebody's heart? Because he always makes a way out. He will always make a way out. He has a purpose behind everything that he does and all that he does. But he will still make a way out. You know, each time the plague would come, Pharaoh would call on Moses and Aaron. And they would talk to God and the plagues would cease. Many times in these scriptures down through, it's the same thing. Each time a plague would come, he would call on Moses and Aaron. But we see that this time it was different. A few scriptures before this one will give us a little bit more insight into this. In Exodus 8 and 30. It says, And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. So these few scriptures before, it tells us 
that it wasn't God that hardened Pharaoh's heart this time. It was Pharaoh that hardened his own heart. Pharaoh had begun to do these things on his own, not only through God. You know, God was no longer hardening his heart. Pharaoh was doing it on his own. He had a choice. So Pharaoh began to have a choice. Just like in the times that we live in today, we have a choice. We have the choice. And I've heard a lot of people, they, they, they get to this and they say, you know, um, we was talking about different scriptures in the Bible that can make people believe that God takes away our choices. And when you begin to study these scriptures and you realize that God didn't take away our choices. Yeah. There are far too many scriptures that say we have choices right. to, to dwell on those scriptures that people believe hold them down. We was talking about uh, this. It's similar with it, but we was talking about predestination. Predestination it, it is a touchy subject for a lot of people because Either you believe extreme one way or extreme the other. It's, it's something that's hard for people to comprehend. But during the in the predestination thing, if you believe the way that some people believe about predestination, then logically, what is the purpose of following God's word? If he has already determined who's going to heaven and who's going to hell, right. what difference does it make how you live? Daddy, his plan. I mean, logically, if you think about it, how, how can you, why would you even need to serve God if he's already determined if you're going to heaven or you're going to heaven? He's yeah. the top of that. There's far too many other scriptures in the Bible that give us choices, that give us our free will, oh, yeah. that give us the ability to choose what we're going to do. Thousands. If you look up the definition of predestinated, one of the definitions is appointed. God has not predestinated where he, we are going or what we are going to do. No, sir. He has appointed us as a group of people to join him. He has appointed us. He has not predestinated you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven, no, no, you're going no. to hell. He has an appointed us to allow us to make our what own decision. Wonderful opportunity. Oh. And I have so many people that will ask me, well, why, why does it say he knows what we're going to choose? Because he does. It's like he's a future seer. He can see into the future. He knows what decisions that we're going to make before we make them. But that does not mean that he chooses the choices for us. It does not mean that he makes the decisions for us. He has a heart no. No. And like I said a while ago, this goes back to what Brother Devin was talking about last night. All the things that, that come up in our lives, people like to say, well, God, why are you doing this to me? Or, devil... Why are you doing this to me? Or why has God allowed the devil to do this to me? Be careful. It's all for a purpose. Everything that we go through in life is for a purpose. It's to get us where God wants us to be. You know, some people, they don't pray to God unless something bad is happening in their life. That's true. So if you think about it, if you only pray when something bad happens... And a lot of bad things begin to happen in your life. Maybe God's trying to tell you you need to pray more often. And maybe I won't send so much bad things. All I want to do is talk to you. You know? Maybe he's saying, all I want you to do is communicate. All I want you to do is to have that relationship with me. The relationship that we need to have with God. It's... It's difficult sometimes because life's going on. Everybody gets busy. 
everything happening that we tend to forget to thank God for everything that he does for us. We tend to, to just let it go by. It's easy when everything's going smooth just to just to forget to pray over your food. Just to, when you get busy and something good happens in your life, you forget to thank God for it. But this is a practice that, that is so good to thank God for everything. Remind if us. you get a new car, thank God for that Remind car. Us, Lord. If you get a new house, thank God for that house. Remind us. If something happens in your life that puts you through trials that makes you stronger, thank God for that. Yes. Don't just pray to God when things go bad or talk to God when you need something from Him. We have to always remember to talk to God all the time. Every part of our life, the good, the bad, all of it. Like he was talking about, sometimes when things go wrong, we have to just thank God for those things that are going wrong. Amen. We have to thank him for the trials that we go through, even though it seems like it's difficult to do in the times that we're going through. Teach us, Lord. It's his way of teaching us. Yes. But not only us, we may go through something to teach somebody else. Yeah. People watching. Pharaoh's heart was hardened not only to teach Pharaoh, but to teach Pharaoh's servants, Pharaoh's people, and also the Israelites. What an example. Yeah. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, was hardened for this purpose. To teach more than just him. Sometimes the things that we go through are not, we're not going through them for us, we're going through them for somebody else. Like he was talking about last night. Whenever you have been through something, you can help somebody else through it. Maybe, maybe you're strong enough and have enough faith to endure what is thrown your way. So you now you have the experience to know how to get through it. Been there, been maybe there. the next person down the line doesn't have as much faith as you do. Maybe they're not as strong in God as you are. Or maybe they don't know God at all. But you can take your experiences and your trials that God has allowed you to go through and brought you through in order to help somebody else. And we learn this from studying the Bible. The Word of God. Studying the Word of God. The, I can't stress enough how important it is. Believe me. I've been in church all my life. Believe, brother and like Tommy. Brother Devin was talking about Believe last night, brother Tommy. It, I was a good church member, but I was an absolutely horrible Christian. A terrible Christian. All my childhood, raised up in church, church every Sunday, every youth rally. We didn't miss church. We didn't miss church for any reason whatsoever. I was a very, very good church member. A pew sitter. Yes. I was very good at that. Want to be in that but I was a terrible Christian. You were good at that. I went out and did everything of the world when I wasn't in church. But, but come Sunday church. morning, none of that stuff took place. It was at church. We had to go to church on Sunday morning. I was a, I guess you, a lot of people call them a Sunday morning Christian. You know, Sunday morning you go to church. Monday morning you wake up a different person to do something else. And, the secret service. and so many people are this way. But we have to study our Bible. I didn't realize the importance of studying my Bible until I actually became a Christian. I have heard scriptures my entire life. And it's almost like, like none of them stuck. I go through the Bible and I study and, and I study these things and I think, I should know this. You know, I, I should know this. I should know the answer to this. And it was all things that I had been taught when I was younger, but I just, it's like I just threw it away. It's like we just push these things to the side. And that's why I stress so much the importance of studying the Bible. That's why we started the Bible study on Tuesday nights. Very because it's very important to study and know the Bible. It's great to come to special services and hear the preacher speak 
and get up the altar call. But like we was talking about, I think it was last week, you know how to come up here and pray, and you know how to fight the devil from this altar. Yeah. But when you leave this church, you don't have the teachings to fight him out there in the world. We have to have the teachings and the studies and the ability to do these things. And the only place that it comes from is from the Word of God. It comes from the Word of God. If you have a question, ask somebody. Yes. yes. There's no question that's stupid. If you have doubts about what you are studying, ask somebody. Yes. If you can't study it and seek it out yourself, ask somebody. Don't remain confused. No. Don't go on believing things that you shouldn't be believing. It, it would be easy to read those scriptures in Romans and say, you know, how could I serve a God that would just harden somebody's heart? How could I serve this God? You know, I thought he was a merciful and a loving and a kind God that wanted all of us to be saved. But here he goes and he just hardens this man's heart. But until you get into it and realize why he done it. And then when you begin to study and you continue to read and you see that he gave him an out. Yes. He gave him the ability to choose whether he wanted to do the right thing or the wrong. In the beginning, he didn't have a choice. His choice was to do what God had told him to do. And that was not to let the people go. He was a vessel. Because God wanted to show these signs. But later on in life, God gave him an out. Amen. And he refused. He refused. So God showed him forth the hardening of the heart, and he also showed him mercy. Always fair, isn't he? And that's why we must make sure that we read and study, because we can come across things in the Bible that we don't understand until you get into them and study them. It's easy to misinterpret scriptures if you don't know the whole story behind the scripture. It's very easy to misinterpret. Yeah. I'm going to turn the service back over to Brother Jerry.